Did you catch this amazing teaser trailer for the Wheel of Time TV show coming out in November? What even is the Wheel of Time? And what's the deal with this thing? What about this? Welcome to Unraveling the Pattern. I'm Lauren, and this is a spoiler-free breakdown of the recent teaser trailer and everything new fans need to know about the Wheel of Time books and the TV show streaming November 19th on Amazon Prime. Really, this video is more like a spoiler light breakdown of the recent Wheel of Time teaser trailer, as the only way to truly go into the Wheel of Time TV show spoiler-free is to avoid videos like this entirely. I'll give a brief rundown of what's going on in the trailer with some foundational background and character information, and I'll reveal some early minor story points for the first part of the first episode, but I won't reveal any major plot or character spoilers beyond Amazon's summary of the show and necessary background info. So if you'd like to watch the TV show or begin reading the books with absolutely no spoilers, this video might not be for you. If you enjoy this video and would like to learn more spoiler-free information about the Wheel of Time characters, locations, magic, and lore, check out my Watt 101 series of videos, where I discuss all sorts of important topics related to the Wheel of Time for new fans of the books or TV show. I've included a link in the description to a playlist of my Watt 101 videos in the recommended viewing order. I also have several spoiler light deep dive videos, and for longtime fans of the books, some spoiler heavy videos as well. Please like the video and consider subscribing. And of course, go and watch the official Amazon teaser trailer. If you've read any articles about the Wheel of Time in recent weeks or months, chances are you've either been misinformed or unnecessarily spoiled. Also, it seems like everyone wants to compare the Wheel of Time to Game of Thrones, which makes sense from a marketing standpoint. But honestly, the Wheel of Time came first and is much deeper in scope than Game of Thrones. So what is the Wheel of Time? This is a complex question, and I've made several videos about this topic, but here are the basics. The Wheel of Time is an epic fantasy series of books written by the late American author James Oliver Rigney Jr., who went by the pen name Robert Jordan. The first book was published in 1990. Robert Jordan passed away before finishing the series in 2007, and eventually Brandon Sanderson was chosen by Jordan's wife and editor, Harriet McDougall, to complete the final three volumes in the series using unfinished manuscripts, a library of notes, and audio recordings that were left behind by Robert Jordan. This New York Times best-selling series contains 14 main volumes, a prequel novel, and two companion books, and has sold over 90 million copies worldwide. The final volume was published in 2013. To put this massive book series into perspective, each of the 14 main series books is close to 1,000 pages in paperback English editions, and a glossary of terms and definitions is also included at the back of each book. By word count, the Wheel of Time series and its companion books are equal to all of the current five Game of Thrones books, all seven of the Harry Potter books, the Bible, War and Peace, the entire Lord of the Rings trilogy, the Silmarillion, and The Hobbit combined. While the books start with a handful of main characters, over the course of the series, there are 2,782 named characters. Amazon Prime is currently in production on season two of a TV series based on this epic best-selling story. The first three episodes of season one will be released on Friday, November 19th, 2021, followed by weekly releases of the last five episodes. Here's the official Amazon Prime description of the upcoming TV show. Set in an epic fantasy world, the Wheel of Time follows Moraine, Rosamund Pike, a member of the incredibly powerful all-female organization called the Aes Sedai, as she arrives in the small town of Two Rivers. There, she embarks on a dangerous world-spanning journey with five young villagers, one of whom is prophesied to be the Dragon Reborn, the one who will either save or destroy humanity. This summary doesn't nearly begin to describe what the story is really about, but it does give a basic foundation for the direction of the first season of the show. But I'll get back to that description in a bit. The world of the Wheel of Time is complex and deep, with thousands of named characters, hundreds of locations, and dozens of cultures. I've made over 50 videos of deep dives and beginner guides to the world of the Wheel of Time, and I've barely even scratched the surface. The Wheel of Time has a complex magic system and deep metaphysics and lore, and paved the way for other incredible fantasy epics like Game of Thrones and the Stormlight Archive. The overarching concepts of the Wheel of Time are heavily influenced by many real-world religions, cultures, and mythologies. The the concept of the Wheel of Time itself is based on the cyclical nature of time found in Eastern religions such as Buddhism and Hinduism. It is said that there are no beginnings nor endings to the turning of the wheel. This is represented by a great serpent eating its own tail. Though the TV 
show took some creative liberties with this and made it feel more like a spiral that never ends, the concept is the same. In the Wheel of Time story, there are seven ages that repeat over and over again. As one age passes into history and memory, those memories fade to legends and myth, and eventually the myths of an age are long forgotten when that age comes again. The story of the books and TV show take place during the third age. The wheel itself weaves a great pattern of the ages that makes up all of reality. The threads of this great pattern are all of the people, locations, events, and things in the universe. As the ages repeat, people are reborn or spun out by the wheel to live thousands or millions of different lives with different names and faces throughout the ages. The Wheel of Time books are also influenced by the metaphysical concepts of balance and duality found in Taoism and the creation and savior concepts from Western religion. There's a creator who is good and a Satan-like evil counterpart called the Dark One, also known as Shaitan. These are often represented as light and shadow. Check out my Watt 101 video about this for more information. My channel is called Unraveling the Pattern because I try to pick apart all of the complex details of Robert Jordan's world for new fans and old fans alike. In the Wheel of Time books, if the pattern were to be unraveled, all things would cease to exist. Like the Thanos snap, but way worse. The Dark One seeks to destroy or to remake the Great Pattern in his own image. The Wheel of Time series has often been compared to The Lord of the Rings, but in reality it is so much larger in scope and really quite different, aside from a few similarities that happen early on in the first book. Robert Jordan said that he wanted the story to start in a way that felt familiar to fans of popular fantasy, and it does feel a bit like a love letter to Tolkien at first, but it quickly changes course as the story progresses and it even introduces some sci-fi elements. So, how does all of this relate to this recent teaser trailer that was released? While there are no beginnings nor endings to The Wheel of Time, the books and the TV show do have to begin somewhere. Like The Fellowship of the Ring, The Wheel of Time story starts in a small, quiet, very remote village. Two strangers arrive in the village during a springtime celebration called Beltine, which is a bit similar to Gandalf arriving at Hobbiton to celebrate Bilbo's party. One of these strangers is Moraine, played by Rosamund Pike. She's accompanied by a stony-faced bodyguard named Lan played by Daniel Henney. A dark rider also arrives in the village, but is only seen by a handful of the people there. Just looking into his eyeless stare causes feelings of extreme hatred and fear. That same night, after the villagers have mostly finished their celebrations, there's a coordinated surprise attack on the village and a few specific farms by the dark rider and by large orc-like freakish human-animal hybrid creatures called Trollocs. These twisted creatures are minions of the Dark One, called Shadow Spawn. They seek to feed on the flesh of humans. You can actually see a quick shot of one of the Trollocs eating an innocent villager here. Look for my upcoming Watt 101 video about Shadow Spawn for more information. Moraine and Lan protect the village from the Shadow Spawn attack and are revealed to be an Aes Sedai and her warder. An Aes Sedai is a woman who can channel or weave a type of magic called the One Power to manipulate the elements. She wears a great serpent ring that identifies her as an Aes Sedai. Notice how she weaves flows here to call down lightning and pushes these Trollocs here with air. This Trolloc could be set on fire by Weaves of the One Power. And notice in this scene, which comes later, that this Aes Sedai is using the One Power to heal a wound. This one uses the One Power to stop arrows in mid-air. And here you can see some sort of One Power shield on this enemy. A warder is an elite warrior who is bonded to his Aes Sedai by the magic of the One Power and is given certain gifts or benefits from that bond. He protects and serves his Aes Sedai at all costs. Anyway, back to the village. After the devastation of the attacks, some of the main cast of characters are told by Moraine that they should leave because the Dark One is after them. Aside from Moraine and Lan, the main cast of characters also includes these three men and these two women. Perrin Ibarra is a large blacksmith's apprentice who is quiet, thoughtful, and slow to anger. He is played by Marcus Rutherford. Matt Cawthon is a lovable prankster who enjoys gambling and carousing. He is played by Barney Harris. Rand Althor is a sheep herder who lives with his father, Tam Althor, on a farm just outside of the village. Rand is played by Yosha Stradowski. His father, Tam, is played by Michael McElhatton. Egwene Alvir is the innkeeper's daughter. She's a very driven young woman who is seen participating in some sort of training or ritual here and here. These scenes don't take place in the books, but it appears to be some sort of coming of age ceremony. Egwene is played by Madeline Madden. Nynaeve Almira is the village medicine woman and healer called a wisdom. She She's a bit older than the others. She's stubborn yet kind, like a stern mother bear who demands discipline but is extremely protective of her cubs. Nynaeve is played by Zoe Robbins. Fans call these characters the EF5, 
which stands for Emmons Field 5. This refers to the name of the village that they come from, which is called Emmons Field in the books. Emmons Field is one of four small villages in a remote region called the Two Rivers. In the Amazon summary, they call the village simply Two Rivers, so we aren't sure if they're actually changing the name of Emmons Field to Two Rivers, or if Amazon is just keeping it simple for now. Anyway, much like the Lord of the Rings, the group leaves the village under the protection of a powerful magic user, and they begin an adventure that takes them across a sprawling, complex world. They meet other Aes Sedai along the way, and find out that not all Aes Sedai have the same motives to keep them safe or to save the world as Moraine seems to. Three of the known Aes Sedai that they'll meet in the TV show are Leandrin, played by Kate Fleetwood, Alana, played by Priyanka Bose, and Kareem, played by Claire Perkins. Peter Franzen can also be seen here, kissing an Aes Sedai ring. He will play a warder called Steppen. These scenes also aren't in the books, but this appears to be some sort of Aes Sedai funeral. Notice the flames in their hands and on the bodies. Perhaps Steppen will lose his Aes Sedai during this attack. In their adventures in the first book, the villagers also visit an ancient cursed city and come across strange creatures and people, all while trying to avoid the Dark One's minions as they attempt to make it to a place of safety called Tarvalin or Tarvalon. Tarvalin is the central city of Aes Sedai power and politics, and at its center is the White Tower where female channelers can be trained to use the One Power and to become Aes Sedai. The Aes Sedai are divided into seven different factions called Ajas, which are differentiated by color. You can see that here. Each Aja has a different specialty and purpose, but they all channel the same female half of the One Power. Their leader is called the Amarlin Seat, a position currently held by Swan Sanche. She has more political power than any king or queen. Swan is played by Sophie Okonedo in the TV show. Her second in command is the Keeper of the Chronicles, and her name is Liana Sharif. She is played by Jennifer Chiang Garcia. There are other Aes Sedai throughout the teaser who are so far unknown or unconfirmed actors. Some few men in the world of the Wheel of Time can also touch the One Power, but the male half of the One Power is corrupted and has deadly destructive consequences to those men who can channel it. I discuss the reason for this in greater detail in my Spoiler Light Watt 101 video called The History of the Wheel of Time, as well as in my One Power specific videos about the male half, Sidene, and the female half, Sidar. Go check them out. More than 3,000 years before the start of the Wheel of Time story, the Dark One was partially freed from his prison and then was sealed away after a long war. Though there are no fire-breathing dragons in the Wheel of Time, there was an ancient hero of legend who faced off against the Dark One during the previous age, and he was called the Dragon. This was his banner. Just before the dragon sealed the Dark One away, the Dark One tainted or poisoned the male half of the One Power. To this day, male channelers of the One Power are doomed to go mad and often cause terrible destruction if they are not captured by female Aes Sedai and cut off from the One Power permanently. Based on these scenes in the trailer, some of the characters will come across a man who is captured by Aes Sedai and seems to be able to channel the male half of the One Power. Notice this black looking corruption that appears to be coming from him as he's shielded by Moraine in the background. This character actually plays a much smaller role in the first book of the Wheel of Time series, but the creators of the show have said that they'll be expanding his role significantly in the show. He is Loghain, played by the well-known Spanish actor Alvaro Morte. It looks like perhaps he's escaping from his captors here. These people who are fighting the warders and Aes Sedai here are likely Loghain's followers, who call themselves Dragonsworn, which is also sometimes what we the Wheel of Time fans call ourselves. Now, the seals on the Dark One's prison placed by the dragon of old are weakening. It's said that in the world's greatest hour of need, the dragon would be reborn to face the Dark One once again, but that he could break the world and destroy humanity in the process. For this reason, people are terrified of Aes Sedai and the prophecies of the dragon reborn being fulfilled. Male channelers are especially feared due to the taint on the One Power and the madness that consumes them. I'll discuss the concept of the dragon of legend and the prophecies of the dragon reborn in a future Watt 101 video. So, based Based on the Amazon description, it seems that Moraine thinks that one of these characters could be the Dragon Reborn. But what are Moraine's intentions? Who can be trusted? With competing factions of Aes Sedai pulling our characters on one side and the Dark One and his minions on the other. There are a million more details that I could go over related to this teaser trailer and the Wheel of Time, but this story is best experienced without too many spoilers. Hopefully this has been a helpful introduction to the series. I'll be creating more Watt 101 content for new fans as we prepare for the show's imminent release. I also plan to make spoiler-free episode breakdowns for new fans who have not read the books to help explain various topics related to the TV show as each episode comes out. If you've already read the Wheel of Time series, check out my spoiler-heavy teaser breakdown videos too. Thank you to my patrons and YouTube 
members who support me and my work on this channel. If you'd like to help support me, you can like and subscribe, or consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash unraveling, or joining me here on YouTube. Tiers start as low as $1 per month, and I'll be coming out with an official logo and a bunch of free merch for my patrons and members soon. Until next time, let the dragon ride again on the winds of time.